Now I'm reading verse 2, and will you listen very carefully? And the wild beast which I saw was like unto a panther, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority. Now, this is really a weird-looking creature. It's never been seen on land or sea or in the air. This is something that is, without doubt, a real spectacle. Now, John notes that he's a composite beast. And we can begin now to formulate some very definite facts concerning Antichrist. And we'll note them as we go along. Now, he combines the characteristic of the other beasts which Daniel saw in the vision in Daniel 7. And again, I would like to say to you, and I regret that I can't go back to Daniel 7, but we went over that. Those that were with us and have my book on Daniel, I think that you're prepared for this. But I trust the rest of you will forgive me for not going into detail because we did that in the book of Daniel. Now, the outward appearance was like a panther. And Daniel says in Daniel 7, 6, After this I beheld and lo, another like a leopard, which had on the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. Now, the panther and the leopard are the same word, by the way, and it could be the one. I like the word panther much better. Now, this was Greece, the Greco-Macedonian Empire. And Greece was noted for its brilliance and its advancement in the arts and sciences. It was noted for its philosophy, for its architecture, and for its marvelous literature. And the language itself is a wonderful language. Now, the empire of the beast then will have all the outward culture, which was the glory of Greece. And it will have the feet of a bear. Now, again, that reminds us of the second beast of Daniel. Behold, another beast, a second like to a bear. It raised up itself on one side, had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. Then they said unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Daniel 7, 5. Now, we saw this was Media Persia, noted for its pagan splendor as it paddled and waddled over the earth like a gargantua. Now, the empire of the beast will have all of the pagan splendor and wealth that Media Persia had. Now, it has the mouth of the lion. And this is the first beast of Daniel 7. In Daniel 7, 4, I read, The first was like a lion, had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked. It was lifted up from the earth, made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Now, this was Babylonian autocracy. When Nebuchadnezzar ordered the death for the wise men, and then later on for the fiery furnace for the three Hebrew children, and even Daniel himself, his life was never quite safe, there was none to question his authority. He was the head of God. He was an autocrat. Now, the man of sin will be one of the toes of the image that Daniel saw, composed partly of clay and partly of iron, He'll rule with the autocracy and dictatorial authority of Nebuchadnezzar. This final world dictator comes to his zenith under the domination of the beast. And the source of his power is found in Satan, who raises him up, empowers and energizes him for the dastardly dictatorial job that he'll do. He's the closest to an incarnation of Satan that appears in Scripture. You remember that Luke said that Satan had entered into Judas Iscariot. That's in Luke 22, 3. Also, Christ used similar language with Simon Peter in Matthew 16, 23. And the man of sin is the incarnation of Satan. 
And very candidly, I think that we can say that Satan has certainly entered into him. And that is something that Paul in 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9 and 10 says, "...even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved." All right, now I'm coming to the wild beast, the death-dealing stroke in verse 3. And I'm reading my translation. And one of his heads, as though it had been slain unto death, and his stroke of death was healed, and the whole inhabited earth wondered after the beast. Now, this verse, together with Revelation 17, 8, has led many to view that Satan actually raises the beast from the dead. And I probably ought to turn to Revelation 17, 8, and we'll just look at that for a moment also. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Because of these two scriptures, there are many that have taken the position that the beast is actually raised from the dead by Satan. Now, friends, that cannot be. And the reason that that cannot be, Satan does not have power to raise the dead. That's just something that has not been given to him at all. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only one that can raise the dead. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. And he says, As the Father raiseth up the dead, and giveth them life, so the Son giveth life to whom he will. John 5, 21. And then in John 5, 28 and 29, All that are in the grave shall hear his voice, and come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Now, the important thing to note here is that only the Lord Jesus can raise the dead. Now, Satan can't do it. So I take it for granted that this is a false resurrection. It's a fake. And the very interesting thing is that the early church even thought it was Nero. And Augustine in his day, what means the declaration that the mystery of iniquity doth already work? Some suppose it to be spoken of the Roman emperor, and therefore Paul did not speak in plain words, although he always expected that what he said would be understood as applying to Nero, whose doings already appeared like those of Antichrist. Hence it was that some suspected that he would rise from the dead as Antichrist. And they all expected Nero to be raised from the dead. Now, there are others that take the view that the beast here refers to the Roman Empire, you see, over which the beast rules, and the imperial form of government under which Rome fell will be restored in a startling manner. Now, I believe that, but I don't think it's a resurrection. Rome never died. Rome fell apart, as we shall see. Rome's like Humpty Dumpty that sat on the wall, had a great fall, and all the king's horses, all the king's men cannot put Humpty Dumpty together again, but Antichrist can and will put Humpty Dumpty back together again. That is the thing that he will do, and that'll be a marvelous thing, let's say. But the Roman Empire, therefore, has not truly died. It lives on in the nations of Europe today. I think both of these views do have something to commend them. While both views have serious objections, there can be no real resurrection of an evil man before the great white throne judgment. And at that time, only Christ will raise the dead of both saved and lost. And Christ will raise the dead 
who stand before the great white throne. That is something that is evident. He said, as we've indicated, the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, that is, Christ. They shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Now, Satan has no power to raise the dead. He's not a life giver. He is a devil, a destroyer, a death dealer. And the Roman Empire is to be revitalized and made to cohere in a miraculous manner under the world dictator, the beast. Yet, verse 3 seems to demand, I think, a more adequate explanation than this. And I believe that the beast is a man who will exhibit a counterfeit and imitation resurrection. This will be the great delusion, the big lie of the great tribulation period. 